Okay. Hey, viewer. This is Andrew, and I just woke up and got out of the shower, so... My voice is really groggy, so... Yeah, okay. Masks in theater. Uh, in ancient Africa, there were... And like many other cultures, they use masks for various things. But unlike the cultures, such as Greek, uh, these were mostly used for rituals instead of theatrical purposes. Uh, these masks were often very elaborate and worn by the performers, and usually the performances would be something around, like, just, well, really, I actually don't know too much, but very ritualistic stuff. And here's an example of ancient African masks. It's in black and white, though. They're all in black and white, I'm sorry. I'm too poor for colored ink. Uh, in ancient Greece, masks were worn by actors in the theater as a way to exaggerate body movement in order to express emotion to the audience, specifically the audience that sit further away from the actors, as the theaters themselves were pretty large. The mask did several other things, including portraying multiple characters and portraying female characters more easily, and according to the Greeks, embody the spirit of the character better. Here's a couple examples of ancient Greek masks. Japanese Kabuki. Uh, kabuki, a style of Japanese theater, uses full face uh, symbolic makeup as a mask. Uh, this is similar to how often to how other cultures use masks in their theater because the Japanese do so in order to portray emotion without having to move their face. This allows the character to have a constant expression throughout the play. Also, the colors of the face make uh, makeup also symbolize many different things. So, if there was a hero in the play and he was wearing makeup, it would most likely be red, because red means brave and passion, and if someone was a sad character, they'd probably have a lot of lines that go downwards in dark blue or something. And here's a picture of a Japanese kabuki theater actor. Uh, the ancient Romans used masks in theater very much like the Greeks did. However, unlike the Greeks, the Romans used harder, sturdier materials such as metal to make the masks, while the Greeks used softer materials that degrade much easier, like clay. Here's an example of Roman theater masks. You can tell it looks somewhat familiar to the, or you can see the resemblances between the ancient Greeks. Now on to Mayan culture. Uh, the Mayans use their masks similarly to how the Africans use theirs, mainly in rituals. These masks were often, were mostly used to represent contact, uh, I'm sorry. These masks were mostly used to represent and contact their gods. These masks were primarily made of jade and weren't always used for wearing. Here's an example. And that would actually be in a really cool color of a green or light blue. Now on to ancient Italian theater called Commedia dell'arte, and I totally butchered that, and I'm sorry. In Italian theater, there are characters that reappear in many different plays and are well known to Italian theater goers, which I think is actually pretty cool how no matter where they went, they could see a familiar face. These characters were all different and very intriguing. Some of the characters, for example, are <laughs> Il Capitino, the captain a bold, swaggering, and cowardly character, and Pulcinella, Pulcinella, as seen in the English Punch and Judy shows, was, uh, he was a dwarfish humpback with a crooked nose, and the cool, he was the cruel bachelor who chased pretty girls, which is pretty sad. Okay. 